Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season we're talking about prayers, and this time we're going to discuss something called a creed. Prayers sometimes contain statements about the faith, but generally the purpose of a prayer is to give glory to God or to make requests or offer thanks. The purpose of a creed is a little different, namely, to outline in a summarized form what we believe. This doesn't cover every essential belief of Christianity, but it does address most of the core ones. Creeds, however, tend to be longer than most prayers, so instead of reciting it in full to start with, I'll just give it line by line along with an explanation of what's meant by each statement. I'll be using the more recent translation of this creed, but arranged in the same twelve sections as in the Catechism, so here we go. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Within this statement, we not only outline our belief in the existence of God, but in his role as the Father, his great power, and his act of creating heaven and earth. These are all separate truths. And in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. Here, we confess that we believe in the existence of Jesus, that he is the Son of God, the only Son in that sense that God has, and that he is above us in authority. Once again, several truths are implied by this one statement who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. We say that Jesus was conceived in the womb of Mary by the Holy Spirit, also implying belief in both the Holy Spirit and in Mary. By extension, we also believe in the Trinity, since all three persons of God have been named already, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. This line implies the belief in the facts surrounding the crucifixion and death of Jesus. Of all the things that happened during that period and before, we have much stronger evidence for the crucifixion of Jesus than for any other event or historical occurrence, and that includes the lives of emperors. We also believe that it was Pontius Pilate who sentenced Jesus to be crucified after having him scourged, which is the suffering that we refer to here. After his death by crucifixion, Jesus was buried in a tomb. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. Some theologians have suggested that Jesus might actually have descended into a hell of some sort, but that's not what this part of the creed implies. The word hell, as used here, is translated from the word sheol, which can refer to the actual hell, but also often means the realm of the dead. This is the way of saying that Jesus' spirit actually descended into a realm of death when he died. 1 Peter 3 speaks a little bit about what happened to Jesus while he was dead, but that's not implied here. What is implied is that Jesus returned to life after having been dead on the third day after he died. This is confusing to some people because Jesus rose from the dead on the Sunday after his crucifixion, which took place on a Friday, and that's not three full days. Well, the reason is that the Jews counted parts of a day as a separate day in this sort of situation. So, by the Jewish reckoning, Jesus was resurrected from the dead on the third day. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. Over a month after returning from the dead, Jesus rose into heaven, leaving his disciples with their mission. He's there right now with God the Father. However, when it says seated at the right hand, this isn't meant to be taken literally. God doesn't literally have hands in that sense because God isn't a physical being. The term the right hand referred to a practice in the ancient world for a king who was seated on his throne to have someone on his right who was second to him, like a chancellor or a steward, or often the queen. This person had the ear of the king more than anyone else, so seated at the right hand of God the Father just means that Jesus always has the ear of his father and is second only to him in authority. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. This refers to our belief that Jesus will return to earth one day to finally pass judgment on everyone, not just people who are alive, but also those who've died since his ascension. In fact, St. Paul says that the dead will rise first. I believe in the Holy Spirit. This explicitly states the previously implied belief in the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity. The Holy Catholic Church. This states that we believe that Jesus founded a church while he was on earth, and that that church is the Catholic Church. The Communion of Saints. 
This refers to the belief that people who are accepted by God for eternal life become saints and are brought into heaven, where they remain together with each other and with God forever. The forgiveness of sins. Of course, this refers to the belief that God can and does forgive sins. The resurrection of the body. This actually does not refer to the resurrection of Jesus, but rather to the promise that at the end of time, everyone will be reunited with their bodies before and life everlasting. Amen. As it says in Matthew 25:46, And these, meaning non-saints, shall go into everlasting punishment, but the just into life everlasting. This part of the creed refers to heaven as life everlasting, which is another belief that we should hold. Next time, another of the creeds often used by the church. That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.